With the 2023 Pokemon World Championships coming to an end, and new DLC for Scarlet and Violet on the horizon, the Pokemon VGC community is deep in preparation for the 2024 season ahead. So, as a way of preparing players for the upcoming Pittsburgh Regionals and Barcelona Special Event, the team over at Victory Road decided to run an online tournament called the September Challenge. This was a two-day event with over 300 players and nine rounds of Swiss, and although it wasn't an official tournament for the new season, it didn't stop some of the best players from all over the world showing up and demonstrating their skills as trainers. As a longtime Pokemon fan, I decided that this year I tried to compete in the 2024 season, and the September Challenge was my first ever major tournament. Here's what happened. So, like any new and inexperienced VGC player, I decided that the best thing to do would be to use someone else's team, and luckily enough for me, Worlds had only just ended, and players who had competed at this prestigious event were starting to post their teams online for others to try out. After watching Worlds, I really liked the look of Kenji Yabata's team, which helped him to finish in 26th place. This team was really unique and it caught my eye straight away because of how different it was compared to everyone else's at the tournament. Most players were running the usual meta Pokemon like Fluttermane and Urshifu, whose main goal is to exert pressure with their massive damage output. This, in VGC, is known as a hyper-offensive team. However, Kenji, a unique team builder, decided to opt into a completely different strategy, which involved using extremely bulky Pokemon like Cresselia and Undozo to set up and stall out the huge damage output of these meta Pokemon. I was pretty nervous going into my first match, and my round 1 opponent was using a really oppressive team, with Choice Specs Goldengo, Life Orb Brain Dance Tornadus, and a Terra Water Urshifu with Splash Plate. No matter what happened, I knew my opponent was going to deal massive damage to my Pokemon, and I'd have to put my nerves to the side, because one wrong move and this team could sweep through me. In game 1, I allowed it Rillaboom and Grimmsnarl into my opponent's Iron Hands and Urshifu. My aim with this lead was to have Fake Out priority on his Iron Hands, and set up screens with Grimmsnarl in order to try and negate some of my opponent's damage. However, my nerves and inexperience clearly got the better of me, and I decided to use Fake Out on Iron Hands instead of Urshifu, which was clearly the bigger threat. And sadly, I ended up losing my Grimmsnarl on turn 1 because of this mistake. Luckily enough for me, on the next turn, my opponent decided to use Taunt on my Cresselia, which left Urshifu wide open to a Woodhammer from my Rillaboom, which was easily able to take it down. I was pretty happy with this outcome because I knew his Terra Water Urshifu would be difficult to deal with in the later stages of the game. Over the next few turns, I made some good reads and predictions, and was able to use Terra Fire on my Rillaboom to survive an Icicle Crash from my opponent's Shen Pao. This crucial terrestrialization allowed me to use Worry Seed on my Cresselia, and for those of you who don't know, Worry Seed is another unique component of the team, which changes a Pokemon's ability to Insomnia, which thankfully prevents it from falling asleep. This allowed my Cresselia to ignore Amoongus' Spore and put my opponent in a very awkward position. In the final few stages of the game, I was able to use Arcanine's Extreme Speed to avoid the Rage Powder from Amoongus and pick up the KO on Iron Hands. And while my opponent was trying to deal with my Arcanine, I was able to use Moonblast from Cresselia to finish off their Shampoo. The game ended with my Cresselia stalling out his Amoongus, which was pretty anticlimactic for my first ever game, but a win is a win. In game 2, I led Rillaboom and Grimmsnarl again. However, in order to preserve my Grimmsnarl, I switched into Cresselia hoping my opponent would target this slot with his Urshifu. Thankfully they did, and I protected my Grimmsnarl while also getting vital rocky helmet damage onto Urshifu. However, unlike game 1, I ended up making some pretty bad mistakes during the mid game, losing my Grimmsnarl to an Iron Hands Heavy Slam and my Rillaboom and Terra Grass Arcanine to Shen Pao's Icicle Crashes. This game was basically a mirror match of game 1, and I let my nerves and inexperience get the better of me, and sadly, I wasn't able to mentally reset from this loss, and my opponent ended up easily winning game 3. My opponent for round 2 was using a pretty unique team, with things like Assault Vest, Terra Electric Shampoo, and Terra Fairy Basque Legion. I wasn't really sure what to make of his team, and after how disappointed I was with my results in round 1, I was starting to worry that I'd overanalyze everything and make simple mistakes. I led with Volcarona and Rillaboom in game 1, 
Thinking that if my opponent was to set up with his Goldengo, I could easily do the same with my Volcarona. And that's exactly what happened. However, after that, I made a huge mistake. Instead of doubling up my attacks into Goldengo, I swapped out my Rillaboom for Arcanine, as my opponent used the Terra Steel Make It Rain combo, which easily ended up one shot on my Arcanine, who was my strongest matchup into my opponent's Goldengo. Needless to say, game one was over then and there. After how the last three games had just gone, I was pretty shaken up and was nearly considering dropping out of the tournament. But thankfully something happened in game 2 that made me believe my luck hadn't completely run out. I made a really great turn 1 play, switching my Dundozo into his Brawloom Spore and using Worry Seed on my Rillaboom to wake it back up. After that, I was able to set up screens with Grimmsnarl and Terra Steel Dundozo in front of his Brawloom and Roaring Moon. As happy as I was with this play, my opponent had been using Breaking Swipe to lower my Dundozo's attack to minus 3, and I was doing little to no damage. But thankfully, I was prepared. When Kenji originally cooked up this team, he saw a unique opportunity to teach Fisher to his Dundozo. With 30% accuracy, Fisher, a one-hit KO move, is not normally something that players would run in VGC. However, it did see some play in a few regionals previously this year with Ting Lu. Kenji saw a unique opportunity to use a combination of screens from Grimmsnarl along with Dozo's bulk to give him a chance to get multiple attempts with this low accuracy move. My Dundozo was perfectly set up behind Grimmsnarl's screens to use Fisher without the fear of being knocked out. Thankfully, Kenji's unique strategy worked out and I was able to land several fissures onto my opponent's Pokemon, which sealed me the win for game 2. I'm not really proud of using this tactic to win a game, but considering my morale was so low and I was on the verge of dropping out, I needed something like this to go my way, and thankfully Fisher Dozo was the turning point of my tournament. Compared to how game 2 had just ended, game 3 was pretty straightforward. I led Arcanine and Rillaboom and was able to bring in my Grim Snarl on turn 1 to start setting up screens, which in turn helped me to bring in my Dozo and start applying Fisher pressure again. After that, I was able to use Wave Crash to grab a quick KO on his Arcanine. In the final few rounds of the game, my Arcanine was able to live a Sacred Sword and make it rain combo on 1 HP, and this allowed me to secure the knockout onto his Shampoo. Rillaboom was then able to clean up his low HP Goldengo, winning me the game and the round. I did get extremely lucky throughout this round, especially with the Fisher RNG going my way, but sometimes when you're feeling down and out, all you need is a little beginner's luck to go your way. My opponent for round 3 was using a pretty standard team. They had the usual meta heavy hitters like Urshifu and Fluttermane, as well as a Trick Room Cresselia and Ursaluna for some more coverage. I knew going into this round that I couldn't afford to slip up, considering his team would be constantly applying pressure and damage to me. I started off game 1 with Arcanine and Rillaboom to give myself a strong offensive lead, and I managed to get a turn 1 burn on his Iron Hands while his Cresselia set up Trick Room. The following turn, I decided to double up into his Iron Hands to make sure I secured the knockout, and soon enough, I was up 4 Pokemon to 3. Even though I felt like I had the momentum after that turn, I failed to realise that I had just given my opponent a free Trick Room, and once his Iron Hands was off the field, he was able to bring in his Ursaluna, set up a Swords Dance, and sweep through my entire team. Going into game 2, I knew that I'd have to take care of his Ursaluna as soon as possible, but my opponent threw me completely off guard and decided to lead with Urshifu and Fluttermane. Thankfully, my Cresselia was able to live a Shadow Ball from Fluttermane, and I got my Trick Room set up and the following turn, I was able to use Rillaboom's Woodhammer to knock out his Fluttermane. So far, things were looking good, and believe it or not, on the next turn, I managed to predict his ally switch, and got a Terra Grass Terra Blast off into his Urshifu, knocking it out and securing me the game. Once again, my opponent changed up his team for game 3, deciding to go with his Iron Hands and Fluttermane, which gave me the opportunity to set up a light screen with Grimmsnarl and fake out his Iron Hands. After that, I was able to get Reflect and Trick Room up, and this put me in a really strong position to absorb his team's offensive power, and start picking up KOs. Thankfully, I was able to play well throughout the rest of the game, and secure the victory, leaving me 2-1 after just 3 games played. After that round, I was really happy with how I handled my opponent's high offensive pressure, and it looked like Kenji's stall team was working exactly as intended. My confidence was slowly starting to grow after each game, and I felt like I was finally starting to find my feet. That is, until my round 4 opponent came along. If it wasn't already obvious from my round 2 games, 
I really struggle to deal with Nasty Plot Goldengo. I'm not sure if this is just a mental block on my end, or if that Pokemon is just extremely overpowered. So, of course my round 4 opponent was running a Nasty Plot Goldengo. Game 1 couldn't have gone any worse for me. I led Grimmsnarl and Rillaboom, hoping to set up a light screen and knock out his Goldengo with Stomping Tantrum, but I completely underestimated just how bulky setup Goldengo can be, and my opponent was able to get off a nasty plot for free. The game was essentially over then and there. My opponent was able to make it rain his way through my whole team, ending the match after just 4 minutes. With how badly game 1 had just gone, I was extremely tilted going into game 2 and was trying my best to keep my cool. And straight away my opponent was able to capitalise on this. They caught me off guard and changed up their leads, bringing Urshifu and Shen Pao. I misplayed terribly on turn 1 and left my Dundozo in on a Terra Grass Terra Blast from his Urshifu. And straight away I was already down one of my strongest Pokemon. Needless to say, the game was pretty much over after that. I think my biggest takeaway from this round looking back on it is just how important it is to keep a level head, and to try to remain calm even if the games aren't always going your way. I was now heading into round 5 with a 2-2 two two record, and it had been announced at the start of the tournament that anyone with 2 losses or less would automatically qualify for Sunday's day 2. This meant that if I wanted to qualify I'd have to win every game from here on out. And after how pearly my last round had just gone, I was feeling pretty disheartened going into round 5. And once again, my opponent had a Terra Grass, Terra Blast Urshifu. But after my mistake in the last game, I wasn't going to let it catch me off guard again. Game 1 started off pretty badly for me. And on turn 2, I ended up wasting my Terror on Rillaboom and using Woodhammer into his Amoongus switching, which threw off a lot of my early game momentum. Throughout the mid game, I continued to keep misplaying turn after turn, and the pressure was starting to get to me. I knew I couldn't afford to lose any more games, or I'd be out of contention for day 2, and I was beginning to overanalyze every possible outcome for each turn. Ironically enough, I ended up being too indecisive when it came to choosing my moves, and and I eventually ended up losing the game because my timer ran out. It's not really that common for a player to lose a game because of their timer running out, and even though Kenji's team is designed to stall out its opponents, I was still pretty embarrassed that I just lost the game because of my indecisiveness. So going into game 2, I decided that I needed to go all out on the offensive and bombard my opponent with as many attacks as possible. I led with Rillaboom and Volcarona and instantly started setting up my Quiver Dances in an effort to try and quickly sweep through their team. This ended up working really well for me and I was able to pick up an early KO on his Amoongus and set up screens with my Grimmsnarl. This was a pretty perfect position for me to be in and it allowed me to easily sweep through the rest of my opponent's team with Volcarona. So this was it, game 3, the round was tied at 1-1 and if I didn't manage to secure the victory, my chance of making day 2 was gone. I ended up making a pretty bold play on turn 1. I swapped out my Arcanine and Rillaboom for Cresselia and Grimmsnarl, allowing me to set up a Reflect and Trick Room on turn 2. The following turn, I was able to set up a Light Screen and Calm Mind, and this put me in the perfect position to Terra Fairy my Cresselia and start sweeping through my opponent's team. I couldn't have asked for a better board position in such a crucial game, and my confidence was slowly starting to build. I was now 3-2, and, and things were looking pretty good for me heading into round 6. But after all of that build up, my round 6 opponent ended up refusing to play against my team. As disappointed as I was with this outcome, I can completely understand where they were coming from. By now, the September challenge had been going on for well over 5 hours, and playing against a stall team like mine, where the rounds normally last more than 60 minutes, can be really annoying. So, my opponent ended up dropping out and giving me the win. I was now 4-2 and two, and starting to set my sights on day 2. There were now only 3 games left to play, and all I had to do was make sure I won them all in order to secure day 2. This was my first ever major VGC tournament, and I was starting to get pretty excited. My opponent for round 7 was using what seemed to be the main meta team for this tournament, and considering I'd already played against it so much in previous rounds, I wasn't too concerned. Going into game 1, my emotions were running high. I was now only a few games away from potentially making day 2, but I was so caught up with everything else going on that I completely forgot to take my opponent's team sheet off the screen for the majority of the game. 
One of my viewers ended up pointing this out to me towards the end of the game, and at this stage I was in a 1v1 against his Iron Hands with my Grim Snarl. Looking at this board position, it's pretty clear that my opponent had the advantage, and all they needed to do was use Heavy Slam on my Grim Snarl to end the game. But for some reason my opponent never ended up using this super effective move and continued to use Drain Punch until I ended up KOing his Iron Hands and securing the victory. I'm not entirely sure what was going on in my opponent's head, but a win is a win, and I was now up 1-0 going into game 2. I decided to lead Rillaboom and Arcanine to get an early Intimidate off and apply Fake Out pressure, and then on the following turn I made the double switch into Grimmsnarl and Cresselia to set up my screens and Trick Room. I was really happy with how these first few turns went, I was perfectly set up to sweep through my opponent's team, and I felt like the momentum was on my side. However, towards the mid game, I ended up making a terrible mistake. For whatever reason, I decided to terrifier my Rillaboom, even though I was well aware my opponent's Urshifu only had water type attacks. And sadly, after that misplay, I had nothing that could handle the onslaught of Terra Water surging strikes. And with that, it was now 1-1. Game 3 was looking like it would decide my fate for the rest of the tournament. One more loss and my chances of making it to day 2 were over. In the last few seconds of team selection, I made a bold decision. I decided to leave my Cresselia at home and bring Grimmsnarl instead. And with that, my fate was sealed. Oh, I might regret this. I was panicking so much on turn 1 that I decided to waste my Terra on Volcarona, and my opponent now had an easy opportunity to plan around this play. It was all downhill from there. I also ended up leaving my Arcanine in on a Surging Strikes, and my opponent was then able to Terra Flying Landorus and sweep through the rest of my team. And sadly, that was it. I just lost, and now, with a 4 and 3 record, it meant I had no chance of making it to day 2. My tournament run was essentially over. Most people would have dropped from the tournament then and there, but considering it was my first ever major tournament, I didn't want to just throw in the towel. There were only two games left to play, and I'd now been streaming for over 7 hours. I decided that the best thing for me to do would be to end my stream and focus on winning my last two games, making sure I finished the tournament on a more positive note. And, believe it or not, I ended up winning both my games, which meant I ended the day with a 6-3 record, finishing in 53rd place. Looking back on my tournament, run, I was delighted with how I played. I was only one win away from making it to day 2 in my first ever major tournament. A lot of my friends, some of whom I've recently made through playing VGC, were all reaching out to me to congratulate me on my run. I was honestly really proud of myself and could feel my love for VGC starting to grow. I've always been a really competitive person, and mixing this passion for winning with my love for Pokemon is how this video came to be. I mightn't be the best player right now, but I can't wait to keep improving, and I hope you can all join me on this journey. If you've enjoyed this video at all, feel free to subscribe and leave a comment with any feedback you might have. I plan on streaming regularly over on my Twitch if you want to watch these types of videos live. And lastly, thank you to Victory Road for hosting this tournament, and to everyone in the Pokemon VGC community who has welcomed me in with open arms. I really can't wait to show you all the journey that's ahead.